labor unrest has placed South Africa's mining industry in the spotlight since last year. And joining us for a look at the sector, as well as results released, are Corvus Now mining analyst at Standard and Maria Simon, who is joint CEO at Village Main Reef. Gentlemen, let's get uh, into this conversation on the back of a framework that was agreed upon last week, a framework for peace and stability in the industry agreed on, and a task team that constituted uh, key uh, players within the sector. Uh, you know, agreeing to the principles basically. You've got a question though whether implementation is going to be uh, feasible moving forward. Your view on what's come to the fore? Yeah, it, it certainly looks like it's going to be a risky year. You know, um, I think the biggest risk of everything is the is the change we are seeing from a union perspective. Obviously, we've seen AMCO moving very aggressively, especially on the platinum, Western Limb Platinum Belt, into, um, into mine workers in terms of their support. Um, the mines are obviously going through a process now of formal recognition. Um, you know, and once that is out, one will have to see how can one sort of accommodate, you know, um, not just the dominant NUM union as it used to be before, but uh, I, I guess a wider scale of unions. And, 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 and uh, you know, it, 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 I guess in the end of the day, it is more, or, or it's, it's, it's a better representation of exclusion maybe on a, on a broader front, so that you don't have this one party dominating uh, discussions. But on the other hand, it sort of brings an environment where you can have a lot of volatility and risk mm -hmm. in terms of getting some of these structures implemented. Also, of course, the unions will be competing with each other, so that puts a different kind of agenda uh, where it was one union, they were the power, they were the ones who did it. Absolutely, and Marius, there's a, you know, you've got to also raise the question of just how accommodating you can afford to be as a miner in South Africa right now. Sure, I, I think to, you know, to balance that though is, um, in, we've also seen this in the gold mining sector and I think the gold mining companies have moved quite quickly in terms of recognizing AMCO. Um, certainly in the Coltonville area, um, you know, ourselves, uh, Goldfields or Sibanya um, and Harmony has uh, recognized AMCO at its operations. Um, we, we do foresee that, you know, it, it's not that new. Um, we've always had um, OASA and Solidarity as, uh, as unions um, with the National Union of Mine Workers. Um, but what it will do is make, I think, wage negotiations exponentially more difficult. Um, negotiating one-on-one -on -one, um, where the National Union of Mine Workers uh, were representative um, and strong, and uh, therefore you could get to a negotiated settlement, um, albeit quite difficult. I mean, negotiation <laughs> around wages has never been easy. Um, all parties uh, honoured the negotiations in the past. But I think it will be more difficult to get to a negotiated settlement and we're also seeing that it's uh, less likely that all parties will necessarily honour mm. the agreements the, that we're entering into. Maybe what one wants behind the, the fine words about cooperation and toleration of diversity and so on. I'm just looking as it happens in Business Day this morning. It says Northam's Boysendal set to begin operations before June. So this is now a new investment. Your Biffles, near the end of its natural life, Village Main Reef, weighing its options at the loss-making Biffles contained mine, kind of sums up the industry. On the one hand, there are these aging assets, declining assets. There's still new investment in some assets. Uh, you want an understanding, don't you, that either way, the investment environment has to be as friendly as possible. Absolutely. You know, I guess if one look at, at, at you know, commodities on a global front, as we all know, it, it all competes for the same capital. By no way is today, I think, is capital restricted to a certain area. The world is very open in terms of investment, investment flows ac across boundaries. And, you know, in the end of the day, you've got to look at, at, at a scenario where you say, how can we, again, give the most for all stakeholders? How can we try and increase the benefit for all stakeholders and with that you need you know for any investor when they get to that decision of whether I want to commit capital they evaluate the risk in terms of capital allocation mm -hmm. with regards to the building blocks and the inputs in terms of cost certainty and stability of labor and and you know and certainly for our deep level mines on a platinum and gold front where labor presents roughly about 50 percent of cost it's a major, major uh, uh, input in these decision making, you know, that sort of determines the risk and, uh, and the expected return that these type of cap capital wants in the While we try and work it all out though, Quobus, I mean, we've got uh, claims made that South Africa's reputation, uh, certainly in the platinum market, are deteriorating to such an extent that uh, uh, international buyers are fast losing confidence in South Africa as a supplier and as a result are looking to source 
from other suppliers globally. I mean, to what extent now are we starting to lose our status as a supplier on the mining scene. It's, it's something that the industry will have to manage extremely carefully. Uh, you know, um, South Africa, as we, as, as, as most of our, us know, is, is about 80% of platinum supply, global platinum supply, and, and, and rhodium it's even more, close to 90%. Um, on the palladium front, however, we only about one third of global supply. You know, and when it comes to auto manufacturers, where they can decide and make a decision now of how much platinum and rhodium I want to use and how much palladium. You know, when you have this uh, instability and this risk around maybe the security of supply in many cases and the price at which one will have to pay one day for these kind of metals, you know, it can destroy the fundamental industrial demand for platinum and rhodium, the two metals which our PGM producers in South Africa is very dependent on. Also, if there's a perceived long-term problem with supply, then technology will find other ways. And I asked this question during the crisis last year with platinum. And, and, you know, is it possible that cars won't need platinum? They'll find another way to keep to the clean emissions. Well, then you've got a completely different ballgame. But, uh, Maurice, just wanted to ask you, just as a, now let's drill down into a real practical example. you weighing your options with your loss-making Biffles mine. We didn't talk about that when you were in last week. Every day you're looking at indicators uh, yeah. as to what you're going to do with this. So give us the balance here and then bigger picture what the regulatory, the, the, the government environment is doing. I think the, the, the reality is, is that you know, as an industry, particularly in the gold sector, we are getting to some of our mines that's reached the natural end of their lives. And we have to find ways of closing it. Now, the, the regulations as far as the DMR and the MPRDA requires you to make provision for your rehabilitation of operations from almost the outset. So from day one, you are preparing for closure. Um, and we've done that. I think the industry as a whole, um, you do not get your mining rights unless you've got your rehab fund fully funded um, on day one. Um, so that's all in place. I think where we are struggling a little bit is just practically, so how do we physically close operations? Um, because in South Africa to date, we've not had a single mine closure certificate issued by the DMR. So there's not been an example of practically how this happened. So you close the operations, but you never relinquish the liability from your balance sheet. And I think that's the difficult part in sort of looking at, let's say, a Biffelsfontein where um, it has reached the end of its life in terms of the current ore body. Um, mm -hmm. Without major new investment, which just does not make sense for us, certainly at Biffles at this stage, you cannot access the, the, the remainder of the ore body. And you have to close it. But we do have some constraints. We've got pumping costs um, on behalf of Biffelsfontein, where that's a perpetual cost. But then we've also got the Margaret Water Company cost, which we have to incur. So we have to find a way to work with uh, the regulators to understand how do we actually practically close these operations. Yeah, where you've got miners having to deal with that, of course, uh, you know, the labor issues still stand front of mind and uh, where we've got these frameworks for behavior being signed, uh, that's one thing. Are we dealing with the root cause of the issue? Of course, we've got social issues in South Africa that need to be addressed. Yeah, I th I th you know, in, in, in my view, it's going to be a long road. It's, it's not sort of going to be a fix that you're going to get sorted out you know, overnight. Um, certainly, we are seeing much more focus going into um, spending with regards to the environment around these mines. Maybe uh, a lot more focus in terms of programs to try and address a lot of these deeper issues that we are that are that we are hearing of. But I guess in the end of the day, you know, you got to get you got to be realistic about the situation. You got to be realistic of the asset you've got on your hands what kind of inputs you sort of need to make it competitive and to make it viable. And then you've got to see how you can reconcile the two. And if you can't, there's not a business. We're joined now by uh, Claude Bassac, who is MD of Unimix. Uh, morning, Claude. Morning. You've been listening to this uh, conversation. And uh, I think the last time we spoke to you was just before the mining in Darba. And That's we right. said, is the mining in Darba going to deliver anything different? And what I thought was more than we expected was several mining leaders saying, we need to think differently about mm -hmm. communities. Uh, Mampela Rampela said we need to think about manufacturing and communities and mining being together. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps you could just tell me whether you agree that uh, things are different and then pick up on this um, framework that is so important to be implemented. Absolutely. I think uh, there's 
greater maturity perhaps on, on the side of the industry. Um, maturity in understanding that things have changed indeed. And not just in South Africa, but globally. The standards of expectations by society on the mining industry are much, much higher. Um, and to what extent that's a product of market dynamics, to what extent that's a product of a change in global awareness and mentalities, I'm not sure. I fear that it is somewhat cyclical um, and that as the mineral rent grew larger in the past 10 years, there's a sense that the pot has gotten much larger and therefore it should be distributed more, more fairly. Obviously that's, that's only fair. But I think that we are somewhat beyond that particular boom mm. and that the cycle has changed and therefore the cheese has moved. But the government's still talking as if the boom Correct. is on. Correct, and that's exactly the problem that we have in South Africa nowadays and in other countries. And we are seeing massive amount of scaling back by the industry, not just in South Africa, but in the rest of Africa and in many other jurisdictions, because there's a realization that actually these frontier destinations are very difficult to develop. And it's Trim within this context that we've got uh, the finance minister possibly looking at uh, mentioning in budget on Friday, mining taxes. What's That's your expectation? It doesn't mean regard? lower taxes either. <laughs> no, well, I, I, as I said, the cheese has moved and unfortunately the cycle of policy is not very good at being adapted to the cycle mm. of commodities and, and, and revenues and business management. Mm. And the big challenge for South Africa and for the rest of Africa is to try to find a way to better manage those cycles. And we've just finished uh, I was in Azerbaijan the last two weeks and managed at, at night to finish a, an analysis of the rent, 40 years of rent cycle in Africa for the mineral industry and for the oil and gas industry. And the result is that it shows us the extent of the disconnect between the cycle, mm. the economic cycle mm. of, of the mineral and, and oil and gas rent mm. and the policy and political cycle yeah. around it. And we see it in countries like Zambia and Zimbabwe where the rent was effectively destroyed in the 1970s. And now we can ask ourselves the question whether all these demands, some of which are legitimate and others not very legitimate, mm. are not coming at the wrong time and are not going to have a very, mm. very fundamental sterilization effect on the ore bodies of these countries, including platinum. And there is a paradox. You know, you hear government talk about the fact that South Africa has a quasi-monopoly on platinum and that we have 2.5 trillion dollars uh, of, of mineral resources. But that's only true if these things can be harnessed mm. economically. And what we are hearing from the mining industry is that we are now in a situation where mm. that is not the case. I want to ask a question, perhaps not of you, Maurice, because you're a chief executive, and maybe this is a, a very, very broad theory. But if you look at the leadership in the mining sector, Kurbis, we've had transitions in those big global miners, and I still don't understand why it takes so long to get Mark Kutifani from Anglo Gold Ashanti to Anglo American. Why it's taking so long for Cynthia Carroll? Because in between, you can't do anything. The smaller companies, like Morris's company, like Graham Briggs at Harmony, um, where there has been leadership stability, is it, is it an impression that I'm getting, or is it real, that it's actually been better for them, they've been able to keep a grip on things better than those big diversified companies? Yeah, look, sometimes, you know, the, the operators that add sort of one mind to focus on and one community, you know, uh, my sense is that it, it has been easier. You know, it's easier to control your people, expectations, the asset, there's just a more concentrated uh, and a more focused approach many times on these type of issues. We've seen it in many of these mines, which um, you can see was, was the casualties, the major casualties in terms of labor issues, and it has been uh, skewed towards the, the bigger names, you know, the bigger operators that, that, that obviously operate across many areas within South Africa and some outside. And they've got to deal with all these issues. And with that, you've got different communities, different type of cultures coming together, different type of re representation from a union-based perspective. You know, and you, you're trying to throw everything together and get to one solution for everyone. And it's it just proven to be very challenging. Mm. To what extent, Marius, do you agree with that? Is it easy for you to keep a handle on things? Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> no, it certainly like. doesn't feel like it. Um, no, I certainly think that what, uh, what one do have is that uh, you, because you're smaller, um, and your management team can focus um, on each of the operations. Um, I, I think you, you do understand your own environment a bit better um, in terms of the specific environments. We've also n really from our side, from day one, um, decided that communication 
um, across the spectrum. So with the regulator, with uh, your communities, with the labor unions were extremely important and each one of the operations um, puts a lot of focus on communicating mm. so that you identify the issues up front um, and through that way focus on, on finding solutions. Um, we've also been very proactive in terms of the labor unions driving some of the solutions uh, with their members. Um, so they're very active in terms yeah. of our forums um, in driving solutions. Quick last word there from uh, Hugh Claude. Mm -hmm. on, uh, are you feeling better than you were before the Indaba and looking at this week and this framework that they've put together last week? I think so. You know, we said that um, in the last um, uh, conversation we had that, um, you know, the, the country is, is usually capable of stepping back from, from, the, uh, from the very edge of the, of the cliff and getting together and finding some way to, to make things go forward. But I'm not very optimistic because I think the fundamentals are not being addressed. Mm -hmm. You know, we are expecting a lot um, of the industry. Uh, from one standpoint, it makes sense. Uh, because they are granted the privilege or the right to mine the minerals. But on the other hand, we're not, it seems, expecting quite enough from the other social partners. Mm -hmm. um, they've been for years now, we've been raising the alarm bells uh, about the uncontrolled uh, increase in costs. Yeah. Um, and nothing is done about it. We are going to see continuous increase uh, um, in electricity prices. Uh, we are possibly going to see increases in taxation. And we are not seeing any fundamental shift in terms of the productivity labor arrangement. No expectations around that. Right now the focus is on trying to keep labor quiet and back to work. But this is just not enough Absolutely from a cost well. standpoint. Well, a new dispensation is needed, but one that focuses on productivity. 